You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That distinct lack of music, if you're listening live, <laughs> if you're listening after the fact, it should be all in there nice and proper, the music you normally expect. Yes, it is time to kick off our broadcast week here on the old OIRN, the old network, with, of course, your first dose of your bi-weekly extravaganza known as the option block. My name is Mark Longo from the aforementioned network, as well as, of course, from the ever exciting the options insider.com. Hope you guys enjoyed double pro week last week. It came at you with the whole metric ton of pro content, including two count them two great double pro Q and A's for that. One of the reasons for that is because if I sound a little bit different this week is because I'm coming at you for the first time in nearly two years, at least a year and a half from the Southern studio. Yes. I busted out the travel studio gear which we haven't used in quite some time, left the friendly confines of Chicago and Illinois for, the again, the first time in about a year and a half and traveled a little bit down south here. So if I sound a little bit different, that is why. Hopefully the live and everything else should be working on your end. If you have any issues connecting to the live, don't worry. Everything will be available on demand. So don't you worry after the fact on your device of choice. And, of course, we're mixing things up a little bit. No live pro Q&A. This week, that's why you got your double dose last week. You are going to get, though, on demand. First off, all the pro members, that's all available right now on demand on this on the stream. They're on the podcast feed. So check it out there. And of course, you will get your boot camp. You will get your OPR and all your doses, everything else like that on demand later on this week as well. Get your crypto and your option block live today. Live again on Twifo on Thursday and the option block on Thursday. I need to have a, a day or two here or there where I'm not slave to the microphone so we can actually do some stuff down here which will be fun and of course you guys can get your oddities again on friday that one will be live as well so a lot of still hot stuff hitting you this week stay tuned for that we usually kick things off with our name that wrestler's entrance music unfortunately don't have the setup here to do that in the traveling studio out here today but i can throw out an interesting nugget of 80s pop culture trivia because we did have a kind of an 80s pop culture bomb go off over the weekend, and it's very relevant to this show because you remember in the early days of our guess that eighties, guess that eighties show theme really was the first one we did. I believe was He Man, <laughs> the old He Man show. Oh well, yeah, of course that came back over the weekend to shall we say decidedly mixed to negative reviews. <laughs> if you don't want to spoil your listeners, just cover cover your ears for the next thirty or so seconds. But I will put it out to you. Our guests here, Mr. Uncle Mike and Mr. Meatball, I will put it out to you for your thoughts because I did see it and uh, I was a little leery. They announced this several years ago. They announced that Kevin Smith was going to be bringing back 
He-Man. I thought, hmm, Kevin Smith, clerks and He-Man. Not sure if that's a marriage made in heaven. He went out of his way. He did kind of a PR tour for the last two years to say, don't worry, not going to mess with your He-Man. It's going to be like the old cartoon. We pretty much pick up after the old cartoon ended. Just going to have some new storylines, going to change the animation a bit, but you're going to love it. It's going to be great. And so I thought, okay, you know, give him a chance. It sounds kind of fun. And then, of course, the show comes along. And this weekend, in the first five minutes, they kill He-Man. They kill Skeletor. <laughs> He-Man literally impales Skeletor on the sword to kill Skeletor in the first five minutes. And he dies promptly thereafter. And it turns into a very different show after that. <laughs> so it is not at all like the He-Man of old. And it was kind of a little bit of a bait and switch. People are pretty mad. And so it was an intriguing. The animation is great. It looks amazing. But yeah, show-wise, story-wise, not exactly I think the He-Man that we were sold early on. I was excited to watch it with my kids, and we watched it, and I was like, whoa, this is not the, not at all what I expected. <laughs> so, interesting stuff afoot. I just wanted to throw that bomb out there, let people ruminate on it. Let's go. You heard his voice now. We are joined by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital. A, welcome back to the program, and B, I'm sorry to spoil the motu for you, but B, what are your thoughts on what I've just described to you, sir, as a as they kick you know, off I to the show the whole series over the weekend. Oh, did you? Oh, it. okay. So you can speak authoritatively on it. What, what did you I, think? I, I, yeah, I, it was six episodes. Uh, not set. I mean, so the satisfying part was they brought back all the great characters from old. I was excited to see for, Stinkor for like two uh, seconds and then appearance. promptly murdered them all. Uh, <laughs> I was disappointed in the merman voice. It was you know, Batman. The merman I know is like, they, they took batman and they took kevin conroy from batman the animated series and made him merman and he didn't change his voice at all he is batman no right and then and then um i would have liked to see the original skeletor voice in there i i believe they had mark hamill do skeletor which is great but um he was straight up joker. he's an amazing voice actor but uh you know so there was definitely some nice nostalgia there uh but i was kind of uh disappointed in the in in it as a whole it was they really should have just called it the story of tila yes because that's really what it's about it's the tila show um, which if they had sold it like that from the beginning people might have been more receptive of it but they even as of a few days ago i saw a thing with kevin smith and he was arguing oh it's not a tila show it's a he-man show and i was like have you seen the show that you made because he's yeah, not no, in it. It, it, it's a tila show hopefully that maybe that'll switch up in in if they do a second series because it definitely left on a nice cliffhanger um yeah they, but, they, they went for it at the end there too i was like what they did the? they did but i, I I'll, I'll be interested to see what what ends up happening here yeah i was excited you know i have the motu license back in a big way is obviously an exciting thing if you go to our studio in chicago listeners there may be a few he-man type tchotchkes around the studio so uh when my son was born one of the first things i did was went out and got the old dvds of he-man i was like i gotta show him this this was my show as a kid so i was excited to have it back in a modern license form that looks good, and it certainly looks good, but uh, yeah, the other elements of it, not so much. Mr. Uncle Mike A, welcome back to the program to you. And B, did you have an opportunity over the weekend to partake in this 80s culture bomb known as the return of Masters of the Universe? Well, A, good to be here as always. B, I did not, and from what you're describing to me, I'm glad I didn't. They're going to get rid of, you can't have he, the He-Man show without He-Man, so... Uh, I'm officially not going to do it. And I would encourage all of the, the listeners out there to not do it as well. Let's not support such madness. If they're going to kill off He-Man, then I ain't watching it. Yeah, and that's not the only death. He-Man and Skeletor in the first, I think about five to seven characters are killed off during the course of this six-episode show. It's, oh, yeah. No, they're murdering yeah. people left and right. And it's like, whoa, this is not um, not what I expected from my He-Man show. And it's probably, you probably didn't expect a He-Man show on your option blog either. So let's keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, welcome to the trading block. And I joke, if you listen to the show at all, you should know enough to expect a He-Man block at the beginning. When Motu comes back, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention otherwise. But uh, coming into today's show, it seems like we got pretty much, I think what you could technically call a whole heck of a lot of nothing really going on. It seemed like the markets were slightly green to start the session as the day has moved on. The NASDAQ has edged a little bit into the red right now, off about nearly a tenth of a percent. Excuse me. S&P up a little over a tenth of a percent in the other direction. Dow up a similar percentage. So 
whole heck of a lot of nothing really kicking things off here today. VIX coming into showtime, excuse me, bouncing around the 18 handle. Was that almost an 18 even coming into showtime, which puts it pretty much exactly unched from our show on Thursday. VIX was at about a 116, down ever so slightly from where it was on Thursday, down about four points. Uh, VXX, a product that loves to erode these days, not really eroding as much, down to about 30 and a quarter. That puts it down about, oh, about a quarter of a point from our show on Thursday. And VOLQ, the at the money vol of NASDAQ, also kind of hanging out down about a quarter when we kicked off the show there. So not a heck of a lot to uh, to parse there. But let's go around the horn. You know, there's some green on the screen. So, you know, Uncle Mike can find something he's excited about. Mr. Uncle Mike, what's lighting up your tape out there today? And are you also in the mobile studio today? Are you back in the comfy environs of St. Charles, sir? I am not in the mobile studio today. So <clears throat> I am in the, the comfy, comfy confines. And in terms of today, it just seems to me like the market's waiting and seeing on what earnings are going to be this week. Um, and we got a lot going on this week, which I'm sure we'll talk about as the trading block goes on. So I think we're just in a wait and see mode. Uh, what is interesting is that we did make new all time highs on Friday. We're not coming off of those. We are still higher technically today by five points. So, uh, that is definitely a good thing. Uh, the other thing that we have going on, there was a little bit of a pop and fix, but I'm sure that's the Monday effect with which, uh, CBS will enlighten us on here in a little bit. So we do have a little bit higher volatility than what we had on Friday as of right now. And so I think just going into this week, it's uh, a lot of wait and see. And uh, I think it's uh, personally, I like being vertical in terms of my spreads and where I'm at at times like this uh, when we're kind of in wait and see mode. That's just my personal preference. Uh, nothing against being horizontal or diagonal, but just in times like this, uh, I typically prefer being vertical. And um, in terms of what's uh, lighting up my tape, uh, the, the other thing that is lighting up my tape, um, oh gosh, I, I hate to even say the word, it just it makes me cringe even the fact that we even talk about this, but unfortunately we have to, um, um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Jitcoin or something like that, that's going way up because apparently uh, um, Amazon sends people to space and now they're, accept ex ex ugh, now they're accepting Bitcoin or they might. So that's... Uh, been kind of a big story that's lighting it up. And um, I think that if you're a short-term trader of it, uh, it can be a great thing for you. But once again, as a long-term holding, if the biggest behemoth on the planet, arguably Amazon, is accepting it, and it's still roughly half of what it was a few months ago, I'm still not a buyer. But that's just me. I know that I know I know there's a lot of Bitcoin people out there. And so they probably are it's gonna send me more hate mail and um put the, the, the nasty uh, stuff, uh, all, all the dog poop on my house that I've been getting. Uh, but uh, I still feel how I feel on it. And that's uh, what's lighting up my tape today. Oh, you're not alone. We had the folks from I think, Bellum Capital on our crypto rundown the last week, and they're decidedly bullish on all things crypto. And they kind of made the point, too, that we've had this huge run up to 60,000 and then come off now. And you still can't really exchange Bitcoin for a whole heck of a lot of goods and services in its native form. You usually have to still convert it back into quote unquote fiat, aka dollars to do anything with it. So you're not alone in that sentiment, Mr. Uncle Mike. It is interesting stuff, but you're right. Are some things afoot out there in the crypto space? In fact, I'll be doing the crypto rundown immediately after the option blocks. If you're listening live, you get your dose of that right away today. No waiting because we got to crank things away here in the Southern studio. But let's head on out now to the land I do believe he's deep in the heart of Texas, unless he's in Detroit, or maybe maybe he's in Chicago right now. In fact, maybe he's beaming in from the studio. Mr. Mister Meatball, A, have you taken over the studio for me in my absence? And B, uh, what's lighting up your tape today, sir? Yeah, I'm actually currently playing with all of your He-Man toys. Okay, no, just, I'm, just I'm put them back Texas. where you found them after you're home. done. That's all I ask, sir. It's good to be home. Um, yeah, we got ourselves an interesting day. You know, I was looking at um, VolQ, which is the uh, NASDAQ at the money volatility. And with all of the earnings coming out this week, we've got about, uh, I believe, over 50% of the NDX reporting. VolQ is really tepid. Um, you know, and VXN isn't particularly any more expensive. The spread between the two, which gives us a good look at SKU, uh, also not particularly crazy. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of what the SPX is doing. So I'm looking at NASDAQ Vol and saying, you know, why is this so cheap with all these crazy earnings going on. I'm looking at um, Mike's favorite stock, Apple, and you know it, it's trying to touch 150. Will it get there? I'll, um, and you know we'll see. And 
you know, that that seems to be kind of the two, the two overriding themes. We've got these this crazy earnings week and um, relatively low implied volatility there. The one area where we have seen volatility kind of pretty pretty steadily creep up since July 4th is um, the VIX itself. Uh, VIX itself with the market high at, at new all-time highs is about three points higher than where it was on uh, when we open on, on uh, when we closed on July 2nd. So we've seen a nice increase in volatility um, with while the market's been going up, that tends to lead to tears. So I am I'm a little bit nervous about what I'm looking at and wondering whether we're going to see some sort of August surprise like we've seen over the last couple of years. Well, we may have an earnings surprise or two in store for us as well. Before we get to that, let's get on what's lighting up the tape out there. I said at the top of the show, not a heck of a lot blowing the doors off. And that pretty much is the case. We'll run down some of the action a little bit more maybe in the, the broad indices than in VIX itself. VIX only at 147,000 contracts right now. So kind of like the ADB hovering still around a little bit shy of the half a million, but it was 471 coming into our last show here. SPY at about two and a quarter million. So a little bit better paper out there in the S. ADB is a little bit shy of 4 million. So actually over half of its ADB out there right now. The S, a similar paper actually, 782,000 out there in the S. So the S is S&P 500 related products are actually putting up some numbers today. Uh, the ADV 1.38. The Q is not so much 625,000. Their ADV is about 1.3 million. So, uh, you know, given how much the Qs have been moving of late today is kind of a bit of a rounding error. And small caps also kind of taking a bit of a break today. IWM only having about a quarter of a million contracts on the tape. The ADV out there is about 660,000. Moving on out to our top 10 most actives. This is kind of when where some of the interesting stuff in the market has been happening of late. And today, a little bit lighter. It takes you only 199000 This is the first time in a while, a few weeks at least, that it's cost less than two hundred k to break into the top 10 most actives. That gets you to Facebook. And then number nine, we've got NVIDIA back up there in the top 10, exactly two hundred k for NVIDIA. Number eight, going out to JD.com. Haven't talked about them in a while. Good old JD.com, uh, their Chinese e-commerce firm. Kind of a few Chinese-related names in our top 10 today here. So brace yourself, listeners. JD.com, 232,000. Number seven, Neo, 257,000. Number six, back to Snap, 268K. Number five, a newcomer to our top 10. This is DD Global. So kind of a, a Chinese Uber, effectively, uh, breaking into our top 10 most actives today. 279,000 contracts. Number four, AMC, 392. That's kind of a light day for them. Numero dos is Tesla. Oh, actually, number three is Baba. Skipped Baba, 491,000. It's a lot of Chinese-related names on the top 10 today. Numero dos here, Tesla, 539,000. And number one with the bullet, 771,000 for Apple. Speaking of Chinese-related names, if you're a pro subscriber, you listened on uh, Options Oddities on Friday, you you heard as the Rock Lobster lured me to the dark side, and we both sold some crappy garbage puts in a Chinese educational name that we had never heard of. So uh, it was always always a good practice to do that, listeners. So by all means, do what we say, not what we do on that show. But it was fun nonetheless. See the steps we take, listeners, for your education and or entertainment. We quite literally leap into the fire, and that one was kind of fun. Let's see what's going on out here. I haven't even checked on it today, so who knows how those puts are doing. But <laughs> let's look today here. Uh, what's going on today? From an earnings perspective, this week is a hot and heavy week. These are kind of the weeks you come to the game for when you're talking earnings and earnings trading and earnings volatility. Let me just give you a quick rundown of some of the big names popping off this week. Today, a little firm you may have heard of called Tesla popping off today. Tomorrow, UPS, GE, JetBlue, Apple, AMD, Microsoft, Alphabet, and Starbucks. It used to be Thursday was the big day of the cycle. It's like they've moved it to Tuesday now, but that's a big one. Uh, Wednesday, our friends formerly across the street, now back across the street of our studio back in Chicago. They're Boeing, Pfizer, McDonald's, down the street from our studio in Chicago. Our studio is very centrally located to a lot of big HQs these days. Uh, Spotify, Facebook, and Ford. Ford, is it Mimi? Is it Mimi again? I guess we'll find out. On Wednesday, Thursday, the Amazonians back in the action. And for Uncle Mike, I know our producers throw this one in. Just for Uncle Mike, WWE popping off on Thursday as well. Will they announce an acquisition? Who knows? We shall find out. Friday, ExxonMobil, Caterpillar, P&G, and Chevron. So that's just a few. That's just a few listeners of what we have popping off for you today. We have an earnings move results report for today. Not a lot unless you're excited by Otis Elevators. <laughs> they were popping off before the bell today. 
They were at 88 and a half going into their announcement. They were pricing in, oh, get this one, listeners. They were pricing in 4.1%. They delivered 0.1%. I don't know if I've seen a non, non-performance non level like that in quite some time. That's impressive. That's impressive to do a whole heck of a lot of nothing on your earnings. And that's a premium seller's dream right there. Uh, so far for the season, we still are averaging a 58%. That's pretty darn terrible. But then again, the season is just kicking off, and we got big names popping off. Tesla, after the bell today. Let's see what they're pricing in. They're at 643.38. We got these ORATS reports in our hot little hands right now, hot off the presses, right at the start of the show. So this is all fresh stuff, listeners. Tesla, six, I almost said Tesla again. 643.38. They were pricing in $40.61. In the past, they moved about $47. So probably the wiser side to be on is the light vol out here in in earnings these days and tesla certainly delivering on that we got jet blue on the 27th before the bell so tomorrow they were at 15 and a half bucks they were pricing in 99 cents in the past they've moved 59 cents so huh. that's perhaps surprising but again, airlines have been a little volatile of late so could perhaps account for that apple a big name i know a lot of you are waiting for tomorrow after the bell 148 and a half is where they were at this time of this report they were pricing in $5.64. In the past, they moved six thirty nine. So again, kind of hard to argue with less vol being the right direction these days. The old Google, a.k.a. Alphabet. Let's go out there. They were $27.56. Actually, let's go out to Alphabet. $26.60 uh, is where they were. $105.71 is what they were pricing in right now. In the past, they moved one fourteen and a half. So I'm seeing a bit of a trend here. Microsoft tomorrow after the bell as well. 289.67. They were pricing in $8.59. In the past, they moved 751. Ooh, softy. We have remarked on this before. Softy, for whatever reason, pricing in a little bit more juice out of the blue. I'm not sure where that's coming from, which division of Microsoft is is driving all this, uh, is where this vol is coming from. But it's intriguing nonetheless when every other pretty much big tech name is trying to crush their vol. And here comes softy saying, nope, we're pricing in more. Boeing, our friends across the street there, 221 and a half. And uh, let's see, they are they were at 805 on their straddle, and they were pricing in the past. They've moved 639. Ford, Ford on the 28th after the bell. They were at 1382. They were pricing in 67 cents in the past. They've moved 56. So a little bit extra juice in Ford, which again, given how they've moved of late and how many people are just loading up on that upside out there, doesn't surprise me there's a little bit more juice. In Ford, Facebook, three sixty nine seventy nine. They were at nineteen ninety. They were pricing in. In the past, they moved eighteen seventy. So extra juice in Facebook as well. This is another one, kind of like Softy, kind of bucking the trend a little bit out there. And we were kind of wondering why that is. Is it all the regulatory heat that's on them these days, or something else? But something else is driving a little bit more juice in Facebook than the rest of the tech names. Let's look at Amazon. Let's see if they're if they're playing that same game as well. Thirty six fifty six. That's where they were as of this report. They were pricing in 153. And in the past, they moved 137. So Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft all now bucking the predominant trend of earnings for since the pandemic began, pretty much, of crush your ball. And you can't crush it enough because it will come in more after the announcement. So that is surprising. Those those are big names. And they are so we, we've been saying for a while, is this is this the moment where the worm turns? Well, you would think if large names are continually pricing in more vol than their straddle or in their past straddles, at least, uh, then maybe that is a sign that the worm is turning. We shall see. We'll wrap it up here for Uncle Mike on WWE 4902 is where they were. Uh, and they were pricing in 362 in the past. They've moved three dollars and seventy seven cents. So not as much there for Uncle Mike. I lied. Let's do one more. Let's do McDonald's. 243 is where they were as of this report. They're pricing in, get this, listeners, $6.11. In the past, they moved four thirty four. So this is now four names in our big names. These are not names you never heard of that are pricing in more vol. That I have I can't remember the last time I saw that in this report. So maybe, dare I say it, perhaps this is the moment you've all been asking about and waiting for where they're we're gonna start art performing again because they're pricing in more vol <laughs> than their straddle. At a certain point, something has to give, right? You cannot keep squeezing that stone forever. Eventually. You got to put a little bit more juice back in there. Perhaps, perhaps, I say, with a, a huge caveat, perhaps this is the moment. Mr. Meepo, I know you watch a lot of these names out there. Are you surprised that we're finally starting to see 
a little bit of a uh, little bit more juice sneaking into some of these big names, particularly the tech names, sir. Yeah, and and what's interesting is yeah, the tech names are seeing more juice and kind of makes sense because I mean they're all at these crazy highs that that is really uh you know they're really to the moon right now. Meanwhile, the index itself, the vol's cheap. There is a dispersion trade out there, folks, that if if you want to trade it because QVol too cheap. Meanwhile, the individual names are through the roof. So there is uh, some some pretty crazy juice going on there. Um, and, you know, we continue to see uh, some just these names go up and up and up. If you're not a, if you're a tech name that is not headquartered in China, you go up. That is what we're discovering. And before we roll out of the trading block, Mr. Uncle Mike, I have to ask you. How excited are you? I know you're on pins and needles every cycle. How excited are you for the impending announcement from WWE, sir? Just pins and needles, I'm sure. Hey, until they bring back the NWO, who cares? I'm NWO for life. Interesting. 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 Because I may, by the way, I may have an interesting tchotchke that just arrived in my studio. I didn't even know what it was until I opened it. And it was a like a, a squishy old type of mad ball, Mr. Uncle Mike. But it had two heads on it. And they were the Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal. <laughs> Don't ask me how that arrived in my studio, but it did. And so I was like, oh, I can't have this thing. This is horrible. So rather than throw it out, I have saved it for you at some point, sir. So if you want your Hawk and Animal mad ball type thing, I'll have to ship it. Remind me. <laughs> oh, I would love it. You know what? I bet Precious Paul Illering, their manager who's still alive, probably listens to our show. And he's probably ticked at you. He's going to come after you someday, Mark. That could be. Tell you what, if you can drag me up a nice two-headed... A uh, demolition mad ball. I will happily swap you for uh, the the <laughs> sweet sweet uh, Road Warriors mad ball as we keep on rolling right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. everybody welcome to the odd block the portion of the show where we get weird well even weirder than talking he-man and mad balls and wrestling and everything <laughs> we go beyond the weird into what's lighting up the weird tape out there in the market of course we unleash our eye of sauron see what it's found out there and we're going to kick things off i do believe this is a newcomer if it's not as a name we certainly have not talked about in quite some time this is confluent inc ticker symbol cflt and I don't even see a really good description of what this one does. It has a subsidiary of Pipeline DB. So maybe they're a pipeline company or maybe that's a, a uh, pseudonym for something else that they do out there. Maybe they're an internet pipeline. Either way, ticker symbol CFLT trading, trading $40 and about three quarters right now. A year ago was actually higher. They've had an interesting year. A year ago, they're trading $45 almost exactly. And then they rallied up to pretty close to their 52-week high. Actually, they did hit it. They hit it in about 58. That was their 52-week high. Right around June 28th, and then they promptly sold off by uh, July 7th. They were trading 42 bucks, <laughs> and they've kind of they briefly, briefly. Why is this not giving me the full year? There we go. All right, because that's this thing hasn't been around for that long. That's why we're talking June 24th here. Looks like this is the extent of the date on this thing. What's going on with my data here? There we go. So this is a newer addition here to the odd block as well, listeners. June 24th is as far back. As your data goes, and that was 45 bucks. That seemed, I thought that seemed odd that it was trading less, but there we go. And then it rallied up to its high, I say 52 week in ear quotes, because it's only a couple of month high of about 57, almost 58 bucks. And then it sold off to kind of 37.71. That was within the last couple of weeks. And now it's slowly on the uptick, even if today it's uh, actually up 71 cents today. Yeah, so a nice little pop today it has, has popped since we started talking about it, up to about almost exactly 41 bucks. Let's see what our eye of Sauron found out. This is one of the larger prints. That we came across out there today. So just for sheer size, it kind of drew our eye of Sauron to it. It was the AUG 30 puts. So an intriguing strike. Like I said, we're at about a 41 right now out there in the stock. Uh, going up 24,840 times. 
So that's a lot of that's a lot of paper for kind of a a no name options name out there going up on the bid. By the way, this market was kind of reflective, I'm sure, of how much liquidity is out there. This market was 25 cents at 70 <laughs> on these puts. These guys didn't try to sell those puts for anywhere near 70. They came in and crushed the bid for 25 cents, nearly 25,000 times. If you're wondering, listeners, this is oh about an 83 ball. So uh, yeah, pretty juicy. The stock was pretty much exactly where it is right now, exactly 41 when it went up. So right here, and there are earnings in the life cycle of this option, which is probably why these options are a little bit juicy. The earnings are on the 5th, so coming up in a couple of weeks here for CFLT. Mr. Mr. I almost called you the Rock Lobster. I apologize. Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts on your, your compatriot's favorite strategy there? Uh, the line in the sand put. This one, you know, he's getting, what, he's getting 25 cents. He's getting an 80 vol, and he's selling a put that's $11 out of the money by, by expiration. It's, it's not the riskiest of ones, but what are your thoughts on this line in the sand, sir? Yeah, it's an interesting one, to say the least. Um, this one doesn't trade very much. The total open interest is is pretty nil. Uh, I'm looking, and I don't know that they've got 10,000 options open right now. So this is like the first huge trade in the stock maybe ever. So it's it's an eye-opener. Um, they have earnings on August 5th. So that's another thing to, to kind of be aware of. But, you know, taking advantage of that earnings vol, built, willing to buy it for 30 bucks. Uh, makes a ton of sense to me. Yeah, you can't really fault them for this one. It's a pretty, I wouldn't say safe because anything could happen in these crazy names, but it's a relatively not that risky line in the sand. They're getting a decent premium to do it. Decent vol level. I don't hate this one. I don't hate it at all. I'll put it in the, uh, we shall watch it. We shall come back to it and we shall say we do not hate it. So we shall see how it fares here. All right, next up, we've got, looks like another newcomer. We kind of, it was kind of a quiet day. Listeners, so we kind of had the uh, set the eye, set the eye of Sauron to maybe look a little bit farther afield for some intriguing paper. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Come up with an interesting one, maybe maybe some summer movie paper here. We'll see. Uh, Lionsgate can't remember. I don't think we've ever talked about Lionsgate. I do believe they are a newcomer to the odd block as well. I remember this ticker. They're LGF dot A. Got to put the dot in there to find it. <laughs> it's a tricky one. Uh, this is the Class A shares for Lionsgate Entertainment. Lionsgate, of course makes a bunch of movies out there, summer movie-type blockbuster stuff you've probably seen out there. Uh, trading right now, $15.40 a year ago. Probably understandably, every movie theater in the country was closed. They were trading $7.92. They got as low as six fifty six. dollars like that was around October of last year. That's probably maybe then they keep extending the theater lockdown, you know, and so that probably was that they had done it again and again. Most of the big movies were had already been extended into 2021 at that point. So that was probably when they really hit their nadir in that October period. Then they've kind of been rallying ever since. They gapped up from the end of October. They were trading, you know, they were low, 656. They were trading about 10 bucks in November. So just a month later, they had they had not quite doubled, but pretty darn close to it. And then by, let's see, by... January 27th, they were trading 16 and a half. So actually higher than they are right now. And then they rallied up some more up to 18 and a half in March. And they got as high on the year as about 21 and a half there in like this June in this, yeah, in pretty much in June. And then over the last few months, maybe as the, as the Delta variant, the concerns have grown or maybe some of, the, I mean, some of the movies have done pretty well. So that you think that would be uh, optimistic for them, some of the domestic and international returns. Uh, but either way, this name has sold off pretty hard from about near 21 and a half bucks down to about 15 and a half where you find it right now, 1541 actually. So let's see what our eye of Sauron found out here in this newcomer. It seems like someone, Mr. Meatball, thinks this sell off is a wee bit overdone because they're coming in and gobbling up. And again, this is a very light options name. We've never discussed it before. So 2,500 in this name is like 25,000 in a lot of other names. 2,552 to be precise of the AUG 17s. So I said the stock was at about 1540 right now. So these are fairly optimistic. <laughs> the stock's got to move a little bit. And uh, they were going up for 35 cents, lifting the offer. They were 30 at 35 cents. This is, in case you're wondering, what is the vol on these? Uh, 55, about a 55 volatility on these. So not nothing. It's certainly meaty. And also should point out, like the last name, there are earnings in this trade. So you're paying a little bit of earnings juice there as well. Mr. Meatball, we're kind of flipping the script now. We're going away from that line in the sand put and getting into a more meme style, very optimistic call by. What are your thoughts on someone maybe thinking the end of the summer movie season is going to be good here for Lionsgate? 
Yeah, it looks like just a straight up swing for the fences and buy calls. Uh, I can come up with some better ideas. I think the 16 calls are a lot cheaper, um, but you got to wonder whether there's something coming here because that is, uh, they are aggressively, for Lionsgate, they're aggressively buying these things. This does not trade very much. So that is a pretty big trade, folks. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I used to have a nice side business on the floor of the SIBO trading movie futures, particularly around opening weekends. And I used to be the guy on the floor people would come to. I'd make the markets and all these things. So, you know, you name it, all the Harry Potter stuff, Spider-Man back in the day. I was the guy. You come to me, you want to make a market on an opening weekend. I was the guy. And uh, I did I did great. And in fact, I wanted to get involved in those movie, those uh, when Cantor Fitz was planning on launching a, uh, you know, kind of a movie Hollywood stock exchange. I, I was looking to get involved. Of course, that's, they've all been shut down, all those things for various concerns about insider trading. And probably rightfully so. But so this is an area I was pretty well versed in. I've, I've since let it go. I'm, I'm not that well versed on the, the schedule of opening names. I don't know if Lionsgate has a big name coming out later on this summer. But uh, I guess we'll all find out. Someone thinks Lionsgate is going somewhere, listeners. So keep an eye on this one. We will keep an eye on this one. And we will come back to it post haste. That seems like it might be a bit of a bridge too far, but we'll see. Crazier things have happened out there as we go out to our final name. Again, kind of a weird day, so we're wrapping it up with another weird name. This is uh, Support.com, Inc. This is a tech support company, as you might imagine. They're trading about seven and a quarter right now, up about 70 cents or 11.3% today, so a good day for them. Also a decent year for them. A year ago, they were trading, oh, a buck 46. You could have had all you wanted for this thing for around a buck and a half, and that was pretty much a 52-week low. And this name, this chart, looks like a biotech because it sat around that level and pretty much did a whole heck of a lot of nothing until March 18th of this year. Then it went from 217, and the next session was trading, uh, where is it, 710. <laughs> so I don't know if they had a good earnings announcement, if they got caught up in the meme palooza, maybe a little bit of both. But for whatever reason, in one session, they more than tripled. They went from 214 to, uh, yeah, to 710. <laughs> so a nice pop for them. They promptly sold off the very next session. They were trading 458 again. So that has a little bit of the the meme ring to it to me. And then they kept selling off down to about two and a half bucks again by May. And then they kind of turned it around again. They started trading up again. And by June, they were trading four and a quarter again. And then, uh, then of course, in the last few sessions, they were trading 399 just uh, about 10 days ago, July 16th. And then the last few sessions, back on the upswing again, back up to this explosion up to 730 pretty much where they're trading right now. So an impressive week here for a couple of weeks for support.com. I'll have to check out, see what's driving all that. But what our Eye of Sauron found, you could probably guess from that chart, it's probably someone buying some premium, but you're not correct. It's actually someone coming in and saying, you know what? This thing is probably a little bit overdone. I'm going to take advantage of all the call juice that you're giving me because someone is blasting away on the Sept 14th. Oh, that's right. I said the 14s because we're at about a seven and a quarter and they got 75 cents for these things. <laughs> these SEP 14s are trading at a 202 volatility right now. He blasted away 2000 of the SEP 14 calls for 75 cents. The stock was pretty much 707 when these went up. Uh, there are earnings within this cycle. The earnings are on August 5th for this one. So there is a little a wee bit of earnings risk in this, but still. That's a heck of a lot of juice, Mr. Meatball, or Mr. Rock Lobster. Actually, I, I, I got the first time, Mr. Meatball. No, you got to write the first time. I apologize. It's the Southern, it's all this heat. I'm not used to able to do with it here. But uh, what are your thoughts here on this pretty juicy SEP 200% call overwrites? You know what? Makes total sense to me. This thing has been super hot. Um, you know, it's a good way of taking advantage of everything going on here, right? So I think it, I think it makes sense. Has this one come across any of your uh, gamma, gamma radar, any of those kind of things? No, no, it has not, but I bet you it might. There you go. After today's move, after today's odd block. See, our Eye of Sauron leads the way, and then your uh, gamma radar dives right on in to uh, see what's, to pick up the scraps, if you will, as we there keep on go. rolling. Speaking of scraps, sometimes he likes scraps. I, I, I won't say what I was going to say. I was going to be mean, but that's not fun. He's Uncle Mike. He's never scraps. As we keep on rolling right on into the strategy block. <laughs> It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. 
All right, Mr. Uncle Mike, I hope you're ready for a bit of strategy. I saw you looking at those WWE numbers. I know you're excited. I know you have carefully constructed an entire strategy block segment, all based around the proper strategies to use in WWE options. Easy for me to say. So have at it, sir. The floor is yours. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? Ever since the, if, if they bring back the NWO, then I'll be on board with WWE. But uh, I'm NWO for life, baby. Um, with that being said, I want to talk today about earnings. And you might say, well, Uncle Mike, that's kind of odd because you really aren't much of an earnings guy. And all no, that's true. I don't play earnings. And today I'm going to explain why. First off, I don't want to say that it's a bad thing to do. Uh, for example, many people can make lots of money doing earnings. There's strategies with which to do it. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. But what I want to emphasize today is how you need to make your strategy fit into your overall investment potential. For example, let's say for let's say that a guy comes up to me and says, "Mike, I want you to invest in my ice sculpting business. I think you'd be uh, it would be something really good. I can make a lot of money. Uh, I would probably politely turn him down because I am not an ice sculptor, nor do I know anything about ice sculpting. <clears throat> and it's for that reason that I stay away from that investment. Nothing against ice sculpting. I'm sure that there's uh, money to be made in the ice sculpting world, but it's something with which I know absolutely nothing about. Now. Let's say we have something a little bit closer to home. Let's say that someone came to me and wanted me to invest in an option strategy that uh, I know, I understand, I get, I, I, I've heard about it and talked about it for my entire adult life, but it's just not what I do. And that would be earnings. Now, with that, in order to make money in earnings, essentially, you need to have an understanding of whether the earnings are going to make the underlying move more or less than what you think they're going to move. So, for example, let's say that XYZ stock has earnings tomorrow and the options that expire on uh, Wednesday, let's say, uh, XYZ stock's trading at 50. And let's say that the 50 call and the 50 put are each priced at $2. That means that the straddle is being priced at $4. That means that people who are trading options believe that the stock is going to move $4 either to the upside or to the downside. Now, the traders could be right. The traders could be wrong. Who knows? That's why it's called trading and not uh, guaranteed money. Uh, meaning that, let's say you were to buy a straddle and the stock moves $5. Well, then you win. You paid $4 for the straddle. And if the stock's at 45 or 55 then that straddle is worth $5. Uh, either the call or the put is worth $5. It mathematically has to be. And likely, there'll still be a tiny bit of money left in the losing leg of that straddle. Now, on the flip side, let's say you look at it and you say, nope, I don't think the market's going to move $4. I think it's only going to move $1 or $2. Well, if that's the case, then you can sell a naked short straddle. You can sell the call naked, sell the put naked, and you get $4 for it. So long as the stock stays between $46 and $54, you win. If it stays right at 50, then you really win. And that's how uh, you ultimately would make or lose money when trading earnings. Now, the other ways with which to do it is that you can buy a call, buy a call spread. If you think, hey, I think XYZ stock's going to go from 50 to 60, well, just buy that call option. Or perhaps you can buy a call spread or something along those lines. Other ways with which to do it, you can sell calendar spreads going into the earnings because you want to play the move and you don't think that uh, the, the volatility is going to come out that quick or it's going to come out quicker. Whatever the case may be, there's a whole plethora of ways of doing it. My point is, is that everything is ultimately based on what that number is going to be or the expectation of what that number is going to be. In my trading, I don't work around short-term numbers like that. Now, granted, if I feel if I'm in a stock, then uh, like, for example, we, we have positions on Apple for our triple income uh, where we sell covered calls, short puts, or uh, sell call spreads against the underlying, things like that. Uh, then yeah, we actually did discuss the upcoming Apple earnings and how we were going to position ourselves around it. But we're not trying to bank on the numbers being good or bad. We're, if anything, trying to protect ourselves against the numbers being bad or the reaction of the num or the reaction of the stock price to the numbers. See, we have a longer term view on Apple in that we want to sell premium on it, but we believe it's a good stock for the long term, and it's a stock that. Uh, we believe that if it does come down, that uh, we're willing to ride it out. Uh, we'll still sell call spreads on it likely at that point. So if it does 
just shoot right back like it did last year, then we won't miss out on the, the comeback. That's how we do it. But the point is, is that we're not playing the earnings. We have a long-term view on Apple. Uh, me personally, I would say a vast majority of the trading that I do is either on um, 10-year note-related options or SPX or SPY options. And with that, to me personally, I hate earnings. I wish they'd go away. Just tell us what it's going to be maybe once every four or five years. I'm cool with that. Just let the S&P do its thing. But that's not the world with which we live. So as I was talking about earlier on the show, I'm a lot more vertical right now <clears throat> for how I'm playing earnings. I feel it's a safer way to go with what's matching with my outlook of being long-term bullish, but short-term cautious within the marketplace. Now, there are times to where if we had a lower volatility environment, I might consider being a little bit more horizontal. But even in, in those times, I would probably still be a little bit more vertical going into earnings because of the fact that if you're horizontal, then if the market moves too much, then you can sometimes get punished for being too right on your call or put spread. So whether you're looking to hedge, whether you are looking to uh, speculate, whatever the case may be, I personally like playing it safer by being more vertical going into earnings announcements. And that's how I am this week because, well, let's be honest with ourselves, we have a lot of earnings coming up this week. So with that being said, what I want to really emphasize is that what fits in with my overall trading philosophy that I've been saying on this show for over a thousand episodes now, I'm long-term bullish, but short-term cautious. And within there, it doesn't fit for me to play earnings. Once again, there's people who do it, people who make money doing it, not against it. But for my purposes, it doesn't fit in with my overall business model. I would be just as, even though I know the terms of play and how volatility works and things like that, I would probably be just as well versed in investing in an ice sculpting company. And that's how I feel about it. Uh, now, and in closing, uh, I'm going to be writing about what I just talked about in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of earnings. I'll be sharing it on my blog and I'll be sharing it on Twitter. Uh, so follow me at Mike Tusa. And that is the strategy block for today, last one of July. So if I can read between the lines there, you're saying buy calls going into WWE earnings. That's what you were saying, right? I may have missed no, some no, of it. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. You got it wrong. Sell out of the money strangles. Oh, oh, okay. You're right. That sounds a little bit. I was trying to fix. Some people were saying they couldn't hear all of you on the live. So I was trying to fix you. I didn't miss all of your stuff. So sell out of the money strangles. That is the key for WWE earnings. As we keep on rolling, we got a little time here. Let's squeeze a few of you on. Let's go straight to the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the mail block. You guys know the drill. Hit us up. Pro members get bumped to the top of the list here. We've got LTL coming in first. LTL says, hey, guys, love the show. Right back at you, LTL. We love all of you. Take the time to listen, stream, subscribe, send in questions, all that good stuff. She's been listening for a bit now. I'm, <laughs> I like this. I'm trying to get my dad into options. He's a little reluctant because he thinks they're dangerous. What can I do to upgrade him from an old school buy and hold stock guy into an options guru like you guys? Thanks. Well, that's a great question there, LTL. I think we've all been there. I've been there. I was there for a long time. You know, I've been doing this options thing for quite a while. Uh, since I walked onto the floor of the SIBO. And my father, he was similar to your dad. He's, he's much more savvy in the market than I'd say most dads. He trades a lot of equities and mutual funds, but he, for whatever reason, refused to dip any toes into the options waters, no matter how long I did this. And I think the thing that finally lured him to the dark side was when I started explaining to him covered calls, in particular, covered calls on names that he had that he liked that were kind of sitting around, like Ford. I think it was Ford covered calls back in the day that really were kind of the thing that lured him into this space. So if your dad's of a similar persuasion, he's a kind of a buy and hold stock guy. I think I've always said my favorite starter options position is usually a covered call for most people. But in particular, if you've got someone who's a little bit dyed in the wool, a little bit likes to buy and hold their equities, maybe you find something that's sitting around a bit in his portfolio, not doing a lot. And you show him, hey, how you can make a, an additional little income stream off this holding that you already have. They can usually understand the concept of dividends and incomes because they trade equities. So it isn't a bridge too far for them to wrap their heads around mentally. 
And they might like to see that little bit of extra income hitting their sheets every month. And once that starts, then maybe they start graduating and they start evolving into other trading strategies and you go from there. But I've had good success, LTL, with the covered call strategy. That would be my recommendation. Sir, so start with the meatball. Mr. Meatball, sir, you want, you're trying to lure your dad to the dark side of options. What do you, what do, you do? What do you tell him? Yeah, I mean, it, the, the yield that you can produce on covered calls is always the, the draw. Um, the other way is to, you know, if you can go through the process of puts, getting, you know, teaching people how to get into stocks at, at discounts is the other way. Um, but, you know, with younger folks, it's way easier. All you do is show them the payoff on a call, on an out-of-the-money call, and they're like, sweet, let me open my Robinhood account. So your dad... Uh, it's going to be covered calls or cash secured puts your, your kid. It's going to be an out of the money call or an out of the money put. <laughs> yes. Swing for the fences, kid. But you're right. I, th- I think I, I hear what you're saying about selling the put. I find that kind of, you have to kind of think about it a little bit though. You have to think, wait a minute, yeah. I'm selling a thing that someone else wants to sell back. It's kind of crazy. I have to, I'm selling a thing to buy it. It's a little counterintuitive people on their first step covered call. They get it right. They're selling the stock. That's okay. So I find that's a little bit easier for people to wrap their heads around intuitively. Mr. Uncle Mike, I'm sure you've had this, this scenario, not, not just with your dad, maybe you have, but also with some older clients. So what do, you, what do you use as a gateway drug for options for them, sir? The gateway drug, I love it. <laughs> well, first off, I'm proud to say that my dad is um, very much an option guy. Uh, so anyway, that's, um, I'm very proud of that. But uh, it... it I would say that in terms of the gateway drug, I, I agree on the covered calls. Uh, in terms of the puts, what I would tell people is that it's, it's like selling an insurance policy. There's someone out there that wants to buy insurance to buy XYZ stock or, or Ford, or you always use the, the names that the person loves. And there's someone that wants to uh, buy insurance on it. Now, how would you like to own that stock at that price? Oh, sure. I'd love it. Or how would you like to get paid to own it at that price? Okay. And then from there, you just, I, I like to explain it as it's like an insurance policy that you're selling someone to where you're going to get paid to buy a stock. And I think that uh, the covered call is a great way, a great gateway drug. But uh, if you want to take it a little bit to the next level, um, I would explain put options as like selling a term life insurance policy and in that the term runs out after 10 years, or in this case, one month, two months, six months, whatever. And once the term runs out, your obligation has been met. But the premium is yours to keep now, always and forever, regardless of what happens. You just have to take on the obligation of buying the stock at that price. And that's how I like to explain it. Well, there you go, LTL. Three different opinions, three different ways to proceed. Let us know how it goes with your dad. As we keep on rolling into our final segment, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week until actually, well, yeah, to Today would be, I'm losing track of the days. Yes, for the rest of this week. <laughs> Let's go around the horn. Let's start with the uncle list of mics, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. Not a heck of a lot light with the tape today, but what's on your radar for the rest of the week, sir? And I just got to watch how earnings, re- how the market reacts to all these earnings coming out. I think that's the big thing that's happening right now. Uh, the 10-year note is more at the higher end of its range at this point in time, uh, or lower end of its yield, whatever way you want to look at it. So I'm watching that. But uh I think earnings are the main thing that needs to be watched. And so I'll definitely be tuning in and watching uh, pre and post market for the next few days. That's for sure. And Mr. Meatball, what will you be tuning in and watching for the market for the rest of this week, sir, until we can gather here together on Thursday? You know, we've got obviously a ton of earnings. Um, What's going to happen with all these Chinese stocks is what I'm really interested in. Um, You know, Alibaba is getting destroyed. The Chinese education names are getting destroyed. Didi, Uber of China, getting absolutely wrecked. Um, JD.com, not good for them. Uh, Baidu, basically any private company, any publicly traded company in China is getting absolutely slaughtered today. Um, they really don't like what the, the turn the government has taken. And uh, I don't blame them. This is just uh ugliness abounds kind of across the board and then um you know i'm watching the casino stocks i don't know about you mark but um 
I'm really looking forward to gambling on fencing and um, archery and the discus. Uh, so what effect do the Olympics have on gambling? All, all I know is that, uh, you know, I'm taking uh, Samoan Biles at, uh, uh, you know, minus, minus 250 to, uh, to, uh, to win the, whole, the all around. If she's, that, if, that, if she's that, only that minus awesome. 250, then yeah, you got you got to take that. <laughs> but as a former collegiate fencer, I look forward to wagering on some sword fighting. That would be kind of fun. But uh, yes, I digress. Yeah, that's kind of funny. What kind of handicappers do you even have? For Olympic? Who's handicapping steeplechase, right? <laughs> there, right. There, there might I mean, be some good odds. That, how fun will that be to gamble on? That would be kind of silly. You, know, you probably get some. It's like it's like the whole thing's a prop bet, right? It's like it's like I'm like your normal. You know who's going to win the coin flip? It's like all the Olympic stuff is kind of prop betting. I so. know. Well, do you see that America won its first gold in fencing uh, on day two? Yes, yes, intriguing stuff. So a lot to be celebrated in the world of American sword fighting. Unfortunately, listeners, uh, that music. If you're listening after the fact, means that uh, we are done at least for today here. But don't worry, if you need a little more in your ear holes and you're listening live, I'll be coming back with the Crypto Rundown immediately following this program. So no rest for the wicked today. Let's usually got to wait a little bit for crypto. Nope, we're coming right back at you hot and heavy because there is some hot and heavy action to break down in the world of crypto volatility, Bitcoin, ETH, all that other good stuff. So stay tuned for that. But before we do that, let's go back around the horn. Let's start with the uh, uncle of Mike's, which Uncle Mike, sir. If folks are intrigued, perhaps... They want to learn more about these earnings-related strategies. Maybe they want to, want to call you up and talk WWE. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? They can follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tussaud, T-O-S-A-W, uh, or visit my website, stcharleswealth.com, if you're looking for a financial advisor who will uh, be more than happy to work with you and who uh, frequently uses the option product and uh, will, uh, if you want to talk some fencing, betting on fencing, I can talk about that, too. <clears throat> Feel free to reach out to me. Mm. Yes, I'll have to go look. I haven't looked at the odds. I'll have to pull them up and see if uh, William Hill has odds on fencing. <laughs> we shall see. And Mr. Meatball, sir, in addition to looking up all of your sweet, sweet Olympic prop bets, what else? If folks want to reach out to you, maybe they want to talk about fencing betting. Where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a webinar this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're going to teach you the secrets and ins and outs of a hedge fund. Uh, it's going to be pretty darn awesome. Go to Octa.com for information or follow me on Twitter, and I'll, I'll be tweeting it out uh, a couple times a day. My uh, Twitter handle is at Option Pick. So uh, come, and, come and check us out, and uh, you're going to be very happy to attend this webinar. There you go, folks. Check them out. You know where to find them, at Option Pit. Dot com is the place to go. And if you're listening live, you don't have to go anywhere because we're going right in to all things oddball. Excuse me, oddball. We already did that. all things crypto rundown here right now. So stay tuned for that, listeners. If you're listening after the fact, don't worry. You got your regular schedule of shows coming at you today. So you're going to have crypto rundown hitting after this. Those will both be on the on demand. Uh, of course, if you're on the pro side, you already have your Simon Ho double dose of pro q and a that's already on the pro podcast feed on demand tomorrow you will also be getting on demand a little fun present for you folks the advisors option hitting the network tomorrow as well as all sorts of good stuff if you're on the pro side you'll be getting the episodes of options boot camp and options playbook radio that are hitting everybody else later this week on wednesday you'll be getting it early you'll be getting it on tuesday as well so early dose for all of our pro pro early access fun stuff and then, of course, we're back again live on Thursday from the Southern Studio for another episode of The Option Block. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, 
facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 